following interview was conducted with Tom Smith for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, February 28, 2011, at this residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good thank afternoon. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, tell us a little about where and when you were born and your born parents in, and early born years. Born in uh, Michigan, City, Michigan City, Indiana, June 23, 1931. My parents were Wallace and Dorothy Smith. Uh, the origins there were Michigan City and LaPorte, Indiana. Uh, we moved to Lafayette uh, probably about 1936. I remember spending kindergarten and maybe the first year at Morton School. And uh, my father was employed in a retail establishment downtown. and. Uh, is that the reason you came to Lafayette? Did yes. you change jobs? Or? Yes, he uh -huh. did. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, then we moved to the east side and rented. Uh, and uh, I went uh, through Oakland School and then uh, Jefferson High School. Uh, Tell us a little about high school. What? Uh, oh, I had, a, I had a great experience. I. I have to wonder if the kids today, and I, I imagine they do, but uh, what a great experience we had in high school. We had uh, Was it you with the old Jeff? Not the, the old Jeff, okay. yes. For and researchers, we, it's a different site than the Yes, Jeff. it is. It's the old Jeff uh, located down on... Uh, it was on 9th Street. On 9th right? Street. Okay. And uh, not far from downtown. And mm -hmm. we, by that time, we'd bought a house up in uh, Island Park on Island Avenue, and I could walk up downhill to school. And, but I didn't. Uh, most of the time, as we got uh, beyond 16, somebody would have a car. And sure. I did not, but I used to have rides. And that's an interesting story because uh, some of those folks turned out to be quite successful, uh, lawyers and doctors. And uh, There was there was no bus service, was there? No. Did you have not, street, you got street? There were buses, but, oh. but uh, not that route. Okay. What uh, about streetcars? There were streetcars uh, that ran down Casus Street. Uh, I don't know what the origin was, but okay. they turned around at 28th and Casus. Okay. Uh, they didn't turn around. The driver changed ends, and I used to ride that because we rented out that way when I went to Oakland School. Sure. Uh, but uh, uh, we had great, great experience in high school. Uh, I bet you had athletics. That was well, we did. I, I had a. I was involved in. Uh, warmed the bench in football and I was on the wrestling team and, and uh, our coach was was uh, Norm Willie who had been a Purdue athlete and uh, because of his connection with Purdue we sometimes came over to the university and had the benefit of the wrestling coach whose name was Claude Reek here at Purdue and then we had a graduate assistant named Ray Gunkel, who had been a Purdue wrestler, who helped us, and we had a very successful okay. go at it. That's, uh -huh. That was probably my first contact with Purdue, really. Sure. Uh, and uh, Jeff won the state championship while I was in high school in basketball. That was a great uh, a Basketball's great, in, always great been thrill. pretty strong there, yes. hasn't it? And uh, I enrolled at Indiana University in uh, fall of 1949 in the School of Business and majored in marketing. How did you happen to select Indiana State? Uh, Indiana and Bloomington. Oh, Indi yes, Bloomington. Yeah, Bloomington. Bloomington yeah. Because of the business uh, oh, curriculum. Okay. And uh, I uh, did okay. I was, I was got fine. I was initiated into uh, the SAE house there and, and had a good experience. But I, I loved to work and I loved the business. And I just was found myself coming home weekends to work in the business. Where your so father I, was? So I transferred to Purdue. Oh. But it was late. Uh, it was after five semesters. And as a result, I lost uh, something like 14 credit hours, which mm. were not... I don't, Purdue didn't offer marketing management courses. There was no... Cranor School wasn't no established. No, Cranor didn't exist. Sure, right. And uh, I, in the meantime... I had enrolled in advanced ROTC at Purdue or uh, at IU, okay. but I didn't transfer until I made arrangements with the military department to be sure I could uh, continue that because of the draft. I had a draft notice between my sophomore and junior year, and to report for a physical, I would have been been gone for sure. They were taking most everybody 
accept medical students because there was a shortage of doctors. And the ROTC program deferred that until I finished. Mm -hmm. But when you do that, you sign an agreement to, to serve so much on active duty when you complete your. And so I did that. I, I, I went uh, the four years. Did they, had, excuse me, did they give you a stipend? And, yes, uh, there they, was a... The, and the, what about tuition and books? No, and nothing. There was a okay. cash uh, stipend. Did you have I, to go to summer camp too? Yes, between uh, junior and senior year. That okay. was in, uh, in Virginia, right outside of Williamsburg at Fort Eustis. And uh, then uh, we... Uh, we... Uh, what, when I completed the ROTC because I had completed the four years and my, I was in good standing, uh, they commissioned me. And that, that took place in the, over the same stage in the same ballroom that exists today in the, the union, union building. Okay. And, uh, in the still do the commissioning there. In the they? envelope right. with the commission were orders to go. So I did not get a degree because I had not made up, I carried an extra heavy load one or two semesters, but I couldn't get it made up. I would have had to go on, and I could have done it if, when I when I got home from the military, I had four more years coming on the GI Bill. So it was a matter of doing it. I did not do it. Didn't have to do it to be self-employed, but I wish I had. In retrospect, one of my very best friends, which uh, may be of some interest to uh, those who may listen to this. Uh, and I really met Jerry Kuhn through uh, the ROTC because we, he was an ag student and we didn't have a lot of other classes together, but uh, we went through the service together and the, and the basic training and then we were stationed in California and we both went to Korea together. And Jerry came back after we were separated and got his PhD and went on a faculty at Penn State and retired from there and is now in Sebring. And we stay in very close touch and, and since the 10 years we've been in Florida, we visit frequently. But that's, a, a, that's a nice. one of the great benefits of Purdue. Sure. And, and uh, I mention that because of his, his academic attributes. He was a food science major and there's a lot I could tell you that he's told me that very interesting. Uh, and uh, along the way, I, I met up many, many Purdue people who were acquainted with my parents. Uh, the Hubdies were, were friends. What sort of business did your father have? Uh, he had a shoe store. Oh, a shoe store. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, uh, then, uh, uh, so I, I had a chance to, to know them a little bit, and their son, Boyd, who practices law in Indianapolis, is, was a very close friend of my younger brother. They were great buddies through high school and so on. And, uh, and I knew uh, Red and Goldie Mackey through my father. My father and uh, uh, Dick Ebershoff, Lafayette Tent and Awning, met with Red one day, and the two of them went out and sold the first memberships of the John Purdue Club. They sold them to local business people. So there's been a long, fruitful association, yeah, and, right. and then uh, it continues to this day, and, and uh, uh, the benefit of living in a great college town like this is uh, a lot of people in Florida thought, why are you moving there? Well, that's a great place to live. <laughs> but uh, so I've had many, many opportunities to know a great many uh, staff and faculty at Purdue. And I notice that uh, uh, Jim Blakesley is on your... He's on my advisory committee. G Jim and I are close friends. Uh, Jim, Jim started in the 1960s. Purdue Staff Aero Club, and uh, there were, as I remember, eight of us, and there may have been six staff faculty and two fellows that were not affiliated with Purdue. I was one of those. Did you fly? Oh, yes. Yeah, I got my license at Purdue, and, uh, well, I took some of my training at Halsmers, but I, I did my uh, 
written at Purdue, and uh, we housed a plane over there. I you had flew your out own of plane? Purdue. Yes, we did. The staff aero club. We actually had two planes. Oh, it was a staff plane, so you could okay. Well, no, the, club plane, the staff, the club plane, but they called it staff aero club. I saw Jim recently over at Westminster. Oh, did you? Yes, yeah. and uh, Rosemary. Uh, so there have been lots of associations, and we could talk a long time about what that. Have, where, what do you still? Is the club still going? I don't think so. What did uh, you do with the plane? What did you? Well, with? they sold them. Oh, did uh, they? I eventually, I flew for a long time, but I eventually left the club. And Jim did. Did you tell keep me, it out at the Purdue Airport? Purdue Airport, yes. Uh, the director of the airport's name was. Uh, well, it's got a senior moment. I think it was Fleming there for many many years and uh, uh, we did Pat and I did have uh, that came subsequent to our service mm -hmm. and uh, we lived in Virginia and then I was transferred to uh, San Francisco in the port of embarkation we were there six or seven months and I had orders to go to the Far East and, uh, this is in the Korean conflict? Yes, mm -hmm. but luckily by the time I got there that thing was it wound way down and I, I figured that that deferment might have saved my life. Yeah, sounds like. And it was a mess over there. It's very hard to believe that what's been accomplished there in 50 years or so, it was absolutely a mess. I, uh, Where'd you meet your wife? Well, I, uh, I, mentioned, you know, I, mentioned, I, I mentioned I wanted to work sure. and I worked I had many of my classes in the morning, which was by design. I worked afternoons and Saturdays, and that's how I got funds and spending money. Sure. I did affiliate with the fraternity here, which I enjoyed. It's still there on the River Road. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I was working one day, and Pat came in on her lunch hour or sometime, and... and, uh, <laughs> and uh, my goodness, because uh, I had no intention of getting serious. I was senior, you know, and I knew I was going to military. And uh, uh, but she had to order them, so I I learned then how to get a hold of her, where she worked. Well, I had a good friend who was dating a lady that worked with her. So I called him and I said, "Do you think that your lady friend uh, could?" fix up a date and that's how it started and uh, then we we had we were engaged sometimes up uh, following that and uh, uh, that acquaintance and and uh, uh, when I got my orders which I did not expect that soon that day in the ballroom bingo so it was either get married then or hope she's still available in two years. So we uh, got busy with her mother and got married before we left. Okay. So and, she uh, was able to go with you then? Yes, she, we left. We were married on the 5th, and we put our stuff in the back of the car and left for the Army from the, from the wedding. And uh, then when I got home, we, Gary, our oldest, was uh, born when I was gone. He was five or six months old when I got home. And uh, uh, kids uh, have a good mother. They've all turned out. They've all turned <laughs> out good. very, very well. And our children are all educated. Uh -huh. uh, Gary has a, a degree in sciences from Indiana University. Uh -huh. And Ann is a DePaul graduate and also a graduate of the Indiana University School of Law. She practices in Indianapolis. And Gary has the business, and our middle daughter takes care of sick babies as a NICU nurse. So Sounds good. Yeah. They've all turned out to be great citizens and very productive. And, That's always nice. And we all have great relationships <laughs> one another, with one another. But uh, we did miss the kids. Oh, sure. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a good, good time. And, and uh, I don't remember how I happened to discuss the bleacher accident with Alan. I would not have oh. uh, had any reason unless something oh, was brought, maybe he brought something up and I said, gosh, I was there. Yeah, that could have been. But anyway, let's talk a little bit about that, how, how you came about to to go there and 
anything that you care to share with us about, about the bleacher incident? And well, my parents uh, were great uh, Purdue supporters uh, of athletics. Oh, yes, right. my goodness. Well, you got to start with the John Purdue Club, too. You yes, my there. dad was a gin rummy partner with Peggy Lambert. Mm. And I mean, we had center seats, boy, right in the middle of the floor, and we were in the first row of the balcony. This is in Lambert? Yes, in okay. Lambert Fieldhouse. And uh, I went to most of the games with them. And my younger brother, we had four seats. And uh, where would you? Where was parking like in those days? Uh, you know, I don't really think oh. I, since I wasn't driving, I oh, don't you, really. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I was under underage to drive, and I, I was about fifteen. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dad probably had a parking pass. I, I, would, I would imagine. imagine. Yeah. Uh, uh, at any rate, uh, I. Uh, remember so vividly because there were not only did uh, Ward Lambert have great basketball teams those were really good years when I was growing up I remember uh, one of the fellows that you would the, the athletic department would remember is Paul Hoffman he was really something and then he was a player oh yes and then they had a center who at that time was very tall he might have been six seven but his name was Bob Miller. He was a Lafayette boy, and he lived down the street from where we used to rent when I went to Oakland School, and I knew his family. So I enjoyed watching the games. Oh, sure. And, yeah. and uh, uh, we, were, we were privileged with those seats because of, I suppose, Peggy Lambert and, 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 and Red Mackey. But... Uh, uh, I got up at the half, and I think you were with your parents. I, I was with my parents, okay. and I, if you remember, uh, would know the the bleachers were were arranged so that they elevated up to where the balcony is, and I can't remember where the floor was laid out, east, west, or north, south, but but at any rate, the long side of the floor. I believe was on the curve because that's about the length of the floor. Sure. And uh, uh, I, I think that now that I've thought about it, I believe I was going for refreshments. And I think I bring that up because I believe the refreshment stands were located just behind and adjacent to the bleachers that collapsed. They were portable. They did they bring in, do you know if they're called, did they bring in extra ones just for this game or were they for the whole season? No, the seasons, uh, yes. Okay, there were, ble the there were bleachers on, on four sides. Okay. Uh, the balcony, of course, was on, on, uh, on behind both baskets and, and the length of the floor on the other side. Bye. Bye, sweet. We'll put that in. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, see you tomorrow, Hope. Oh, I'll let you know. I'll okay. I'll check my emails. I'm going to the grocery store, and I'll check my emails and let you know if I've heard from Lori. Thanks, honey. Yeah, I hope you um, Yeah, me too. So, I believe that I had gotten up to go get some kind of a snack, which would be typical. And actually, I was behind the basket area when I heard the crash. And I, did, I went around there immediately and saw where it had, and my folks witnessed it. Because they were still in the seats. They were right across the they floor. They were not from, in the bleachers. Though. Oh, no. They, they were, were on the opposite side of the floor. Okay. The bleachers that collapsed were on the open side of the floor, uh, length of the floor, where there was no balcony behind them. So they were perhaps a little taller than the ones that went up to meet the balcony on the other uh, length of the floor. And then there were bleachers on either end that went up to meet the balcony. If, uh, if yeah, am I making you, it clear? Yeah, yeah right. And uh, there was a, it was just a loud thud with a lot of noise. The bleachers, as I recall, had metal uh, perpendicular braces. So the, the seats were wood. Uh, and of course, it was it was at halftime, and of course, the game was called. And. Uh, I remember leaving and going to St. Elizabeth Hospital. I had a cousin whose name was Marcia Ginther, actually a second cousin, uh, a student who was injured. And she had a very large gash in her, in her leg. Uh, 
her calf of her leg. So we went down to St. Elizabeth. I don't know how we learned about that that quickly, but, sure. but that's we did go down there. And it was a real hustling, bustling yeah, place at that time. Right. Uh, there isn't, uh, I do know, as, as you probably know from, from past recording or past readings, there were some students who were under the bleachers who were uh, deceased. Uh, and I don't know, I never knew, I thought they probably had dropped something. The bleachers were open between the, between the seat and, and the feet. And I think probably things may have dropped down in there. And two or three lives were lost, as I recall. Yeah. Does that seem right to you? Pretty, uh, it's excerpted in the topping book, and I'll make copies of those yeah. pages and send them to you just so you yeah. can have them. That's, yeah, that's what I remember right. most. And, uh, but the Hugdies were there uh, at the game. It could be, I, it I'm not sure. It says in the book that they were there. They were there. Right, they uh, were there at the yes, game. Yes, uh, they were great people. Uh, were your par uh, your were parents were right close to where, because you said you had started maybe to go to get a snack, but you hadn't really... Well, they were in their seats, and okay. they saw it, okay. and, and they were on the opposite side of the floor in the first row of the balcony, and uh, they saw Was there that. a lot of panic, a lot of yelling? No, it wasn't. It was okay. more of, a, more of a, a dead silence, like, you know, I don't remember a lot of screams. Okay. Uh, it was. Uh, and then they got they got a lot of amb what the ambulance. And oh yes, the medical and, people came quickly and and uh, it was uh, dispatched with. Uh, right. Okay. Properly, I thought. I think it was handled very well. It's just a terrible tragedy, and frankly, I thought, how could an engineering school could that happen? You know, right. and it just happened. Something know? gives. Way I don't know where the kids were. Because it was halftime, they were standing, and some of them were leaving at half for for whatever. And uh, it, you know, you know the way they jump up and down today, and it, it, that wasn't going on. Uh, and it, and it, they probably had a lighter load at the half than it had prior to that. It, sure. it was a strange. I don't know where they ever figured that out. But um, did uh, your your second cousin was she in the hospital for a couple of days? Yes, several days, and she recovered and finished school. Mm -hmm. Some of the people are pretty more injured than others. Oh, I think so, okay. but but I I'm not right. really qualified to say sure. the degree of the different injuries. Right. Uh, uh, but it was it was. Uh, what about the next day? What was it like in the town? Well, all all the discussion was about that. It was. Uh, I'm sure that the newspaper had a large front page oh, yeah. article, and that you could research easily. Sure, and oh, yeah, probably right. have. But yeah, uh, we do have some material. But yeah, you get kind of a. A lull or something. Yeah, I would hope that the General Courier would have that oh, sure microfiche, would. I would think. Right. Right. But yeah. um, gosh, uh, it's uh, <laughs> things that you don't think about uh, after so many years. That's and, right, yeah. But uh, then there was, an, according to the Topping book, there was an investigation. They had a study and they were whatever. Yes. But, that, yeah. But then uh, the final game, the, the other thing was played sometime after it's but another location, not in there. But Could that be. probably was closed for some time, do you think, that Lam do you recall, Lambert? I, I do not. Okay. I'm okay. not able but to they have, help you. Probably did because they want, if there's an investigation, yes. they have to go in there and have a Like an airplane scene. crash, you yeah, know. Exactly. They, they kind of don't disturb the scene, I That's think. That's right. Uh, I don't know what happened uh, uh, with the rest of the home games, I don't remember. Let me ask you one thing. You're, was there anybody with your second cousin who was uh, at the game was injured at all or not? Well, she was in the bleachers, I guess. She get. was. Okay. She was in those bleachers. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. There wasn't anybody brought to my attention okay. that was with her that was hospitalized or from her hometown or her residence here. Uh, I don't I don't really know. You call that. Okay, no. that's good. All righty. Um, we talked about a little about family, and how about some hobbies and special interests? Oh. <laughs> well, you can I, have some of both. Yes, uh, the retail business is uh, very. Can you tell us about your career that you continued on your you took over your father's business? Well, I oh. I didn't right away because uh, my dad was young when I was born. Okay. And uh, 20, 20 years old. Okay. And. Uh, uh, but you helped out. I, I, I did, and then 
when I got out of service, he kind of backed away and I managed that store. And then Pat and I got ambitious and, and started opening other stores. And uh, I think the first thing we did was a clothing store at Market Square, which she operated for 16 years. And then in the meantime, we began to open more shoe stores. And we ended up with two at Tippy Canoe, uh, and they were in center court at that time. And then uh, one in Castleton and one in Greenwood in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. So at the time that I decided to, to uh, retire, I had we had five. And my father was not involved in those, uh, but. Uh, he had one at markets. He had one at markets. Well, we had two, uh, but that would be six. But we okay. eventually, we eventually uh, closed the Market Square location, and uh, that is the clothing location, and moved that to Tippecanoe New Mall with shoe and added shoes with it. Okay. We later converted that to 100% shoes. That was right in center court. I tell you, what's in that room now is the Best Buy, in the mall. Hmm. And then directly across on that corner, there's a jewelry store. That was our little uh, concept store called Connie Shoes. We had that 16, 17 years, I think. Uh, it's uh, uh, corner stores and malls today go to jewelry stores. You've noticed that, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And it's because of the large amount of revenue they can generate with a small physical inventory. And for us to get uh, enough to sell $5,000, it took quite a lot of space. Yeah. They can do it with a with one little diamond in one box. That's that's what it amounts to. And that generates revenue for the landlord sure. because they get, in most cases, a percentage of the sales. And so when we left that location, that jewelry store paid three or four times the rent we were paying. And we were offered another location mm -hmm. in the mall, but decided we were getting to the age where we didn't want to do that. Sure. Okay. And every one of our stores that were outlying, Indianapolis, uh, Castle and Green, were all corner stores. We just kind of worked that out over the years and waited until we could find the right spot. Sure. There's good and bad locations in malls, just like there is downtown. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, they always talk about location, location. Yeah, <laughs> and and it was good to us. We 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 did fine, and, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's it's extremely uh, uh, complex, and and uh, it requires lots of time and lots of capital. That's right. It's not a service business. It's a it's a, it's a capital intensive business, and, and uh, you need to you need to. Uh, Build that up over the years, and then you did need to establish a relationship with a right. with a lender, a banker. That isn't done overnight. It takes That's a while. Right. It takes slowly. But by the time we we had opportunities to open a lot more stores, didn't we? Many, uh, but decided. I'm glad we didn't because when it went time when it's time to quit, you you have to dispose of that. And it's not easy in malls. You ever see anybody come in and buy a store in a mall? They close them up, put something else in there. So, uh, it's a different that, type of real estate. Yeah, it is. It took us about four years from the time we decided to retire to be able to retire. Sure. To take care of our. Plan over the hit. Well, we had leases and sure. we had, uh, what do we have, about 60, 60 employees. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of obligations to take care of and right. wind ups before we could. But we did that, and it worked out fine. Right. And we we don't have any complaints. Sounds good. So. How about a Purdue tradition? Well, we basketball would be one, right? Or yes. Athletics. Do you go yes. to foot, do you go to football? Oh, we had season tickets forever. Okay. Until we went to Florida. Okay. Yeah, they they would have moved me today. We, ours were fifty yard line seats. At uh, when Ross Aid? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> right dead. I mean, on the fifty, forty nine rows up. Ooh, they weren't. They that's hard come, to take. They don't come any better. But no. they had been my father's, and I mentioned that. Yeah. They, you don't do that anymore either. Yeah. Uh, well, this was before I, I they think, renovated did all the changes and stuff. They might have been in the family fifty years. Yeah. But uh, 
uh, it was after we left that, uh, that uh, Morgan Burke made these decisions to change the seating arrangements based on your level of giving. And Point we, on the we, didn't, we didn't give enough to stay on the 50-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they did major renovation in Ross A, too. Yes, they and they're going to, re what, some reconfiguration for Mackey with the new you yes. know, seat, seat allocation, because when people sit behind us instead of that, they've been talking about that. We, uh, we enjoyed, uh, one of our very early dates was the music hall. Was it South Pacific? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the New York cast of South Pacific, they had oh, entertainment. It was the roadcast, I don't know. Roadcast? New York yeah. cast. Right. Yeah, it wasn't, what's her name? Uh, Mary Martin. They have a it wasn't Mary know. Martin. Yeah. But uh, we enjoyed no, they have a good years. series. A lot of good series and things. There was a fella that was uh, talking about having good luck. I talked to you about the football, basketball tickets. The ticket, the ticket, uh, controller for the music hall was named Bob Smith for years and years and again not related but he was my Thursday golf partner <laughs> so guess where we, we had sat wonderful seats for <laughs> quite a few years it does help when you have friends <laughs> yeah well sometimes we Colleagues. got sometimes we got the president's seats they, they always saved a, they always saved a few there and at the last minute if he didn't use them why well, he'd call they were me available. yeah <laughs> that sounds good to me <laughs> But the, uh, the convocations at the uh, music hall were a great joy to us. Yeah. And uh, Al Stewart and his wife were also friends of my parents. Uh -huh. And uh, so we enjoyed watching him. There was no connection there with any seating right, or anything. Right. But he was a, he could get music out of people like nobody else yeah, I've ever he seen. He was good. I went to a yeah. few things when, he was, when I was here. He was still here. Yes. Yeah. How about an outstanding event? You can have more than one. Oh, okay. okay, that's fine. I'm okay. pointing to my wife. Yeah, that's good. Okay, <laughs> we've had a we've had a great uh, uh, run, I guess you'd say. It's been uh, Fobo yeah. goes on for a long time yet. It's, oh, I think so. Right. It's uh, she did a great job with the kids, and she gives me the dick and says we did it, but she's takes two. Kids <laughs> uh, have turned out, as I mentioned earlier, to be. Sure. Very gratifying and all and educated. We all we got them all out of school with no debt. That's good. Yeah, and and, and with our little one, I thought she was never going to get done. <laughs> See, by the way, uh, our youngest daughter, who is that the one that went to law school? Yeah, uh -huh. who, who got her undergraduate at DePaul. Uh, loved school, and she spent three summers in Cranford. And uh, took extra stuff. She said, Dad, I can't. I don't have time to take all this, and I want to take it. She, she took calculus and trig and econ and accounting and all things that were not available on her schedule. And, uh, but she could take them in summer school. She did that. Yeah. And she was smart enough to get the course outlines and take them to her professors and be sure they transfer. Uh, but another little interesting tidbit when I was in high school at Jeff, there was a family here in, in West Lafayette named Lommel. And uh, the, the brothers were engineering professors, W.E. W. E. Uh -huh. And I forget the other one. And uh, they had two daughters, and one of them's name is Anne. And Anne became a professor at Purdue. You may, have know, you may know that, but she did. I think she just moved into University Place. Well, when our Anne decided to go to law school, I learned that Ann Lommel was a faculty advisor for students for law school applications. So I called her up and uh, well, she said, Tom, if she's gone to Cranert and had attended Purdue, I can help her. And she did. <laughs> nice. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. She really did. Yeah, it's and, nice to have little relationships like that. Yeah, you know, when they have yes, somebody you can touch kind, base with. Yeah. 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 And we saw Ann uh, at a restaurant here shortly after we got back, and I went over and told her. I said, "That student you helped is just doing fine. <laughs> she got through it." <laughs> and uh, so there had been lots of lots of connections. Uh, we had many years, many yeah. friends that that yeah. uh, uh, 
uh, I mentioned Jim Blakesley. Jim Blakesley's on their advisory board, the yeah, library yeah, the archives. Yeah. And uh, Rosemary, we know them very well since the 1960s, mm -hmm. early 60s, mm -hmm. about 50 years. And uh, they have several lovely daughters, mm -hmm. beautiful girls, all of them. And uh, I can tell you what his address used to be, 506 Waldron. That's where they lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're now at Westminster, as mm -hmm. you may know. Yeah, Jim told me. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and... Uh, Others, we had other relationships with other Purdue Gosh, associates. Right. Yeah. We got to know um, the Bearings quite well. Uh, we were not terribly socially active with them, but I met uh, Dr. Bering uh, first came. I was in, heavily involved with the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, he and the two mayors are ex, were ex-officio members of the board. And uh, Steve, the chambers, the yeah, chamber and Steve came to quite a few meetings when he started. It really pleased us. And uh, that's how I first met him. And, and uh, he ingratiated himself to me because he said, don't call me doctor, call me Steve. And then he said, now if you have trouble with getting football tickets, you call me. Which I never did. But uh, but he was sincere and he meant he, it. Oh, he meant it. You know, right. And they're a very musical family. I don't know whether you're aware of that. Yeah, I know. Well, our daughter, youngest daughter, is, is even has a degree in music. And she made good friends with their oldest boy, Peter, in law school. And spent a lot of time at their house. Oh. And, uh, and uh, got to know them quite well. And, and then... Through other events, we would see them too. Sure. So it was a joy, and I I check on him occasionally through Byron Anderson. Byron was a longtime trustee, and a, and a good friend of ours. Right. And uh, he lives close to here. And he also lived not too far from us in Naples in the winter. Hmm. So I've been able to track the bearings a little bit. <laughs> with the, yeah. Anything, uh, anything I forgot to ask or anything in closing that you think, anything special you want to say? It's nice to share these other things too, which is good for researchers. I also want to make a mention that also sitting in is his wife, Pat, and also here for a little bit was one of his daughters, Nancy. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, yeah, Nancy. Yeah, right. The oldest daughter. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything to think of? Uh, not at all. I hope I've been of some help oh, to you. Oh, yes. I want to thank you, Tom, very oh, much. And Pat, I really do.